This is Michael's prayer. Lord, take me where you want me to go. Let me meet who you want me to meet. Tell me what you want me to say. And keep me out of your way. He went flying around the city, you know, robes flying and all behind him and always going and yet always stopped to have the chat. Not seeking anything for himself, but seeking to share God's love with the person he's talking to. He's good looking, big, uh, great hair. The priest used to kid him about uh, loving a mirror. Powerful hands, like a carpenter or construction worker. I couldn't help but notice he had a, a, an earring. There was very little you could say to Michael that would shock him. He was a monk of the world. And he had this great, wonderful laugh about him. I call it wild. It was a wild laugh. I was walking down 31st Street and he was crossing the street and he was in his full fire chaplain regalia, you know, the, uh, the uniform with the hat and the hat, uh, and he looked fabulous. I mean, he looked fabulous. His whole uh, ministry was about love. Yeah, he was the perfect Franciscan. I hope I'm not making him out to be a really holy Joe. He was so human. He'd be vastly amused at the idea of being a saint. Michael wasn't the one to judge. He had judged himself enough and then found freedom. Life, life and death. So valuable. And you wonder when my last half hour is going to be, or my last hour, what it'll be. Will it be doing something for someone, trying to save a life? with another edition of City Folk Morning. This one for a Tuesday, September the 11th. Going to be a sunny day with highs in the 80s today. The Carol Burnett Show debuted 34 years ago today. It's Brian De Palma's 61st birthday. It is Election Day. New York City voters go into the polls, a mayoral primary... Uh, Comptroller up for grabs, public advocate Julianne will be by with news headlines in just a couple of minutes. It is 8.51 and we are trying to sort out the details of something truly terrible that has happened this morning at the World Trade Center. A very large explosion there, high up. We were flying into Newark at 10 to 9. And Diana said, does the World Trade Center always pollute like that? And I said, what do you mean? She said, well, there's a burst of smoke just came out of it. It pours out like, like slow. It's not like it's fanning flames. Like it was just a very, very slow pouring smoke. I turned around and ran back to the friary. I went in and said, Michael, I just saw the jet and told him the story. And with that, he said, oh my God, oh my God, got up, took his habit off, got in his fire clothing. And I remember saying, good luck and have a good day. And God be with you and I love you. Father Judge and some of the other chaplains would normally come to something like that where the tragedy is the worst hoping to be of help if anybody was seriously injured we didn't uh, talk much you know I remember saying to him how you doing and he's okay you know that kind of thing and then I was busy and he looked like he was praying he looked like he was uh, to me looked like he was mouthing the prayers you know he could see his uh, his lips moving, that's what I thought. I saw a concern on his face that I didn't normally see. You know, my first instinct was, I gotta get down there, you know, I gotta get down to the tower. So I, I ran down and I made it to about Chamber Street. 
uh, which is about four blocks, I, I believe, from the, from the trade centers, and the first tower collapsed. The sound was so big that you just heard, like, all the people that were down there, like, like, it just took their breath away. Like, the sound was, like, hit you right in the chest. Like, it, like, sucked all the air out. I ran and made it to the base of the tower that was still standing. And it was this real eerie light. It was a weird day, you know. It was, it was, there was this beautiful light coming in, and um, as I was getting near the tower, people were starting to evacuate down the stairs. I noticed that there was a group, like a, a you know, firemen and, and police and uh, FBI and emergency services carrying this man. So I started making some frames, and the, the one fireman started yelling at me, you know, stop taking photos, stop taking photos. I kept shooting. Such a striking photograph. These uh, big men, obviously in anguish, and Michael limp and serene at the same time in their arms. You know, it uh, reminded me a lot of the Pieta. This is how Michael would have prayed to have had the last day of his life transpire, doing what he loved. This was one of the most horrific moments in American history, and he would have been nowhere else on the face of the earth but with all those folks. Michael wasn't a hero in 9-11. He was doing his job. He loved the fire department, and they loved him, and he proved it. He could have left the Trade Center. Mayor Giuliani told us that he said to Michael, come with us. And he said, no, I have to stay with my men.